everyone and welcome to Yarngasm. I'm Kristen and this is episode 249. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. And if you are a new viewer, welcome to the podcast. This is a podcast about knitting, spinning, hand dyeing yarn, sewing, and making all the things in Brooklyn, New York where I'm from. And I live with my husband Dennis and our adorable cat Bella who's currently snuggled up next to me. And as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your day to chat about those things with me. So before I get into what I've been making this week, just a couple of announcements. Uh, Volenvine Yarns, my hand-dyed yarn company, will be having a trunk show at Indie Untangled this year, which is a trunk show that happens the weekend of Rhinebeck. So that will be Friday, October 20th in Kingston, New York at the Best Western. And it goes from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time. So if you're going to be in the area, I really hope you can make it. It's so much fun and it keeps getting bigger and bigger every year. And I'm currently in trunk show prep right now. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in shop update. So of course I'll actually be attending Rhinebeck on Saturday. So that's the actual sheep and wool festival that happens in Dutchess County on the Dutchess County fairgrounds. And if you do see Dennis or I walking around, obviously we'll probably be together. Come up to us, say hello. I will give you a hug. And as always, I really do enjoy meeting podcast viewers. And yes, I will be attending the the podcaster meetup uh which happens at 1 p.m on the hill the hill i'm so excited i i cannot believe ryan beck is almost here so that is one announcement the other announcement that i have is vlogtober vlogtober is happening uh if you are not familiar with vlogtober it is a month-long vlogging spree that i am partaking in <laughs> every day for the month of october i will be uploading a vlog to my channel, which if you are watching this podcast, you're probably on my YouTube channel. While I do publish to iTunes, I will not be publishing the vlogs to iTunes just because it takes, it takes a long time for me to upload videos to iTunes in general. So if you are interested in following my October shenanigans, uh, hop on over to the YouTube channel and uh, you will find a playlist there of all my vlogtober videos. I'm having a lot of fun doing that. It's definitely a challenge. Um, recording little snippets of my day and compiling them into a little fun video. They're really short. They're usually between three and six minutes long. October is definitely one of my favorite months of the year. So I'm really excited to kind of share that with you. So yeah, we have, as I mentioned, Rhinebeck coming up and Halloween coming up and a whole bunch of other fun things. So really looking forward to sharing those things with you. Um, yeah. So next up, we have some Oracle Cowl winners. Yay! So if you're not familiar, I designed the Oracle shawl. Hey, kitty. Want to sit on my lap? I love you. Yes, I know. I know. Want to come? Oh, boop, 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 boop. Say hello. Did you catch a spider yesterday? Did you catch a spider? I know you did. I know you did. So yes, our Oracle Shawl Knit Along has come to a close. It was a two month knit along. Uh, if you are not familiar, I designed a pattern called the Oracle Shawl. It is right here. Let me show it to you. It's a ginormous pie shawl of brioche and a very simple lace motif. And it's a ginormous pie shawl. So yeah, if you have not seen this yet, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So yeah, I hosted a knit along for it and I was blown away by all the different versions of the shawl and I know a lot of you were playing yarn chicken so I salute you. It that's if I had to say one drawback of the pattern is that there will be there will be a game of yarn chicken because the shawl does use up an entire three skeins of yarn. So you will have little to no yarn left over by the end of knitting this. Yes, but if that is not your bag, if you are not into yarn chicken, fret not because I invented, not invented. I came out with, or I'm coming out with a crescent version of it. So it's not a ginormous commitment. It's just a half pie version of the same shawl and uses only 50 grams of 100, 100 gram skein of it only requires half of each of three skeins of yarn. So that's another option that's coming out on November 1st. So I just want to quickly announce the winners of the full pie version of the shawl. And as I mentioned, there are two winners and each one will be able to pick a skein of woolen vine yarns in a colorway of their choosing. And again, I just want to say thank you so much to everybody who participated and all the entries were just, even the ones that are still in progress are just so beautiful. Um, I closed the, the FO thread, but I will be keeping the chatter thread open for anybody that wants to dip in, partake, uh, look for inspiration, or just continue the conversation essentially. So uh, I will be leaving that open. And yes, okay, winners. 
Uh, number 19, C Star Mel. So congrats, C Star Mel. Uh, she knit a really beautiful Oracle shawl using all of Olin Vine yarns. She actually used a kit using the same colorways that Tommy from Squirrel Pie Productions podcast uh, used for her Oracle shawl. So really beautiful, really stunning. Congrats. And the second winner is number 15, LK Silk. And she knit another beautiful Oracle shawl, also using Volan Vine yarns. Uh, but yeah, it has like browns and whites and uh, really beautiful blue. And again, beautiful work. Uh, congrats again to both winners. Please PM me on Ravelry with the subject line, Oracle shawl cow winner. And let me know which colorway of mine that you would like me to dye up for you. So yay, congrats again. And again, I will be having another knit along for uh, the ha as I, na I named it the Half Moon Oracle as a lovely viewer suggested. I'm so sorry, I'm blanking on who you are, but they left a comment in on the last podcast episode and she suggested Half Moon Oracle and I was like, yes, yes, that's the name. So Half Moon Oracle is currently being test knit and will be available to purchase and download uh, on November 1st. So cannot wait, super excited, and I hope you guys are too. Alrighty, so let's move along to what I've been making this week. Uh, I do not have any finished objects to share with you. However, I have been very monogamously knitting on my Damiaka Lofa cardigan, uh, which I am hoping to have done by Rhinebeck, but at this point, it's down to the final countdown, essentially, and I don't know if it's gonna happen. I'm I will be totally honest. I'm losing a bit of steam on it just because I've I'm by no means a monogamous knitter. I am a poly poly monogam I forget the word. I'm generally not a monogamous knitter by any means, so I've just been knitting on this nonstop and I have to admit I am while I love I love knitting on this and I love the way it's turning out, I feel like I just need to take a little break from it. So I I might, I might take a little break, maybe a day or two, but guys, I'm there. I'm there. I'm about to bind off. I have maybe about four, four more rows of ribbing to knit before I get to bind off, and then I'm going to start on the sleeves. So once the bottom is all bound off and I have the sleeves started, I'm going to knit them concurrently, but once I have them started, I might take a little bit of a break just to cleanse my palette a bit and then come back to it. But um, I'm wondering if that's even a good idea because Rhinebeck is happening in about two weeks, which is crazy sauce. I tried it on, fits like a glove, and uh, yeah, steaking, steaking will happen. I will vlog about that too and tape a little little video of me of me steaking for the very first time. I'm excited for it, you guys. Uh, the other thing that I have to do is figure out a button, figure out what kind of buttons I'm going to use because. I will be quite honest, I don't know what size buttons I should be using. Maybe quarter of an inch, maybe half an inch size buttons. I'm not quite sure. I, I'll have to check Ravelry and see what uh, what other people have used, what other size buttons people have used. Or or I can just I can just ping Ellie. Ping Ellie from Skander Knits and see what buttons she used. Why didn't I think of that first? Anyway, but in case you were wondering what yarn I'm using, it is Jameson Spindrift, which is a fingering weight, 100% Shetland wool. And as I mentioned last week, it's not very close to skin. It's kind of meant to be worn over a shirt or something else, like have, have another layer underneath. But as I said, I feel like it's going to, oops, I feel like it's going to um, soften up significantly after I block it. And yeah, I'm just, I'm really looking forward. There, there are a couple of mistakes in here. I don't know if you can tell. I'm not kicking myself over it. I just, I want, I want to be able to wear it for Rhinebeck. That's all. Um, so, I'm trying to think what else I want to say about this. Yeah, these little random stitch markers that you see throughout, those are holding dropped stitches. Uh, because when you knit with black yarn, it's really, it's sometimes easy to miss those drop stitches. Uh, as you can clearly see, I missed like four or five. I have like one more on the back, so. That is another thing that I'm going to have to secure once it's all blocked and and yeah, but I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, I switched down to a smaller needle size for the ribbing as the pattern suggests. So I was using US 2.5 or three millimeter needles in the, the Lika needles and now I've switched over to Chiaogu US 1.5, 2.5 millimeter needles. So yeah, it's knitting up very lovely next up i well i did i did cast something else on because last week i 
finished a pair of socks. So, you know, when that happens, you gotta cast on another pair. And I needed something just mindless to work on intermittently. So either while watching TV with Dennis or talking on the phone or chatting with friends or what have you, it's always, I always like to have something mindless on the go. So I cast on another stockinette stockinette or plain vanilla sock I should say and the yarn is trekking and I purchased this at Pearl P Town Pearl in Provincetown Massachusetts or Cape Cod and I purchased it two years ago two summers ago so it's been sitting in my stash and I just reached for it because I was not in the mood to cake up some new yarn it was already ready to go and I'm like you know what I'll just cast this puppy on and call it a day and Obviously, it's been a very mindless knit. Normally, I don't knit my sock legs this long, but I just, I don't know, I wasn't paying attention to what I was knitting, and <laughs> before I knew it, I'm like, I should really start the heel now. Uh, but yeah, I am using my, my go-to sock needles, uh, Hiya Hiya Sharps 1.5, 2.5 millimeter needles, and yeah, it's, it's a nice, sturdy, woolly, woolly sock. Oh, I do, I do have the label. That's shocking. I never, I never seem to be prepared when it comes to labels. So it's 75% Chauvola, super wash, 25% poly mid, 75% Nouvelle, and 25% nylon. And you get 459 yards or 420 meters. And it's made in Germany. And yeah, here's, here's the label. So yeah, love it. So, and the color, again, they never really name any of these anything exciting. So it's number 27, I'm sorry, uh, colorway number 118, uh, lot 27-112. So here's what it looks like close up. So it has like this really cool marled effect that goes throughout. And yeah, I, I really enjoy knitting with this, um, or I'm really enjoying knitting with it. So it's gonna be a nice wooly, wooly, dark purpley mauve winter sock for me. Yay, and unfortunately that is it for knitting. That's all the knitting that I have this week, but I do have some sewing to share with you. So if you follow me on Instagram, I posted a photo of my new Zinnia skirt. I'm actually wearing it right now, and let me stand up so you can see. So it has pockets, and it fits like a glove, you guys. This is probably one of my favorite things that I've sewn to date, it's just, it was such a fun pattern to put together. However, it was not without some <laughs> swearing and, oh my gosh, what did I do? No, 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 no. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if you can see right here, but there is a seam. And what happened was I did not sew these pleats as close together as they should have been. So what happened was the waistband was shorter than the skirt. The waistband fit fine, but the skirt was way too wide. So. So in my mind, the way to remedy that was to cut out an entirely new waistband to fit the skirt circumference, put it all together, and then I was going to be like, I'll just take it in once it's all done. So I, I did that. I cut out a new waistband, put it all together, and of course, I had about two inches ease or one inch ease on either side of my waist when I was done with the skirt. Everything looked perfect, it was great, except for that ease around the waist, which I was expecting. And then before I decide, before I began surgery on the skirt. I decided to call my friend Amy, who's an amazing sewist. She's actually a fashion designer. And uh, I said, hey, this is what's happening. What should I do? And so basically what she told me to do is to unpick the waistband by the side seams and unfold it and then take it in at the sides as much as I needed to. This is probably not gonna make any sense, but uh, what I ended up doing is unpicking the waistband at the side seams, unfolding it because the waistband is like folded in half and tacked down on the inside. So I unfolded it, sorry, I folded it on the inside together and then pinned it and then kind of did like a tapered stitch. So from the top of the waistband all the way down to the pocket, I did, um, I sewed straight for the waistband and then kind of tapered down to the pocket on the inside. It seems crazy, but it worked wonders. So while the original pattern doesn't have like a side seam over here, I don't know if you can see that, um, I'm totally fine, as long as it fits. If it's like a glove, there's no bulkiness in here whatsoever. Whereas if I were to um, just go like that and sew it, there would have been some kind of bulky thing happening. So yeah, there's barely any, it's barely obvious. If you look really closely, you can tell like, oh, it was seamed, but honestly, the pocket starts here and yeah. So 
And in the back, I have a button. So a really fun skirt to make. Next time I'll know to pay more attention to the pleats and I definitely plan on making more of this. It's perfect for fall. I use chambray fabric, so it's this really beautiful kind of dark charcoal uh, chambray. And it's very tweedy and very vintage feeling and I feel like I'm on the set of Outlander or something when I wear it because it's so wooly. It, it's not obviously not wool, but it has that feel to it. So, you know, put a nice shawl on and I'll be ready for autumn. I feel like this episode is going to be very choppy. I, I'm feeling a little out of practice today. I have to start and stop, start and stop. But anyway, just bear with me. Speaking of more sewing, because I do have more sewing plans, I am going to be making my Halloween costume this year. And if you tuned in last week, I talked about how I'm going to be going as Farah from A Court of Thorns and Roses, which is my favorite series at the moment. I am obsessed with it. I got the wig, I got the ears, I posted about that on Instagram. It's They're hilarious. I love walking around the house with my fae ears on and Dennis thinks I'm crazy. But I don't care. And I'm basing my costume on this uh, fan art that I found on Pinterest. It's The artist is called Charlie Bowater and she does some really beautiful fan art. I will post a link to it in the show notes, which you can find over at www.yarngasmpodcast.com. Uh, but yes, she does some amazing Akotar fan art. She does other stuff too, but uh, there's one photo I was just, I fell immediately in love with the dress and I was like, I have to make that happen. So I will pop a photo of it here so you can see what I'm going for. And I purchased this McCall's pattern. I showed this off last week as well. I don't know if you can see, but I'm going to take this bottom, the bottom of this version and pair it with this top and I'm going to elongate the sleeves. So if you can envision that, um, I got this crepe fabric from fabric.com and I'm not, I'm definitely, definitely going to have to line it because it is quite see-through as you can see. <laughs> so, but that's, that's fine. I have, I have a slip and I am de definitely going to, uh, line it. So there's no seeing through. Uh, so yeah, it's just some really lovely black crepe fabric and then <laughs> some really awesome silver glitter sparkly tulle. Uh, and I'm a little on the fence about like the pairing of these two because it's, I don't want it to be too, I guess, yeah, no, I think from here, if I look at it, it works, but it's just gonna overlay like such. And I think it's going to be a really cool costume. So yeah, some of this is gonna stick out too. So it's not all gonna be double layered over like this. So it's gonna be very flowy, very sparkly, very airy. Uh, very, very excited to crank that out. That's, this is going to be a task, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. It's, I'm a little nervous about it, but I'm gonna make a muslin. I'm gonna make a muslin. I'm not gonna, you know, I, I'm not worried. To, it's a Halloween costume, so I'm not too worried about mistakes. Uh, the other fabric that I got, which I was like, yes, I have to get this. I could not resist, um, but this is cotton and steel in some chalice. How beautiful is that? It just, it screamed my name. I was like, I gotta get five yards of this. <laughs> so I did. And I am hoping to make another Gertie dress. Uh, the, it's the same type of fabric that I used for the other Gertie dress that I made with the, it was a black background with flowers all over it. So this is gonna be another one of those or that's what I'm planning for. But guys, I am so in love with this pattern. So yay, back to sewing. Definitely got my sewing mojo back. I'm hoping to make another violet top, uh, or not another one, a vi my first violet top by another pattern by Colette that uh, I have in my stash that I've been meaning to get around to, but I'm thinking it would go really great with this skirt, with the Zinnia skirt, and I'm going to be sewing that out of Liberty Fabric, some really beautiful mauve <laughs> floral Liberty Fabric that I've been coveting ever since it arrived, but uh, yeah. So those are my sewing plans. I know it's been a while since I chatted about sewing, but glad to be back at it and yay, more sewing. So that said, I'm gonna move along to shop update, but it's a, gonna be such a short segment because I'm not having a shop update this week or the following week because I am in deep trunk show prep. I, as I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, I will be prepping for Indian Tangled. I do plan on having another update that Friday uh, after the festival. So 
I believe that is October 27th, which seems like a really, really long time away from net from today because I feel like it's the beginning of October, but it's gonna fly so fast, at least for me because there's just a lot going on. But so just to compensate, I will have a an update of uh, remaining skeins from the trunk show that Monday. So October 23rd, I believe. So I'll, I'll pop it in the down bar just in case I got that wrong. But uh, yeah, stay tuned for more info on that. But what else did I want to say? Yeah, so anyway, uh, thank you, thank you so much to everybody who stopped by my, my update last Friday. And it means so much that you guys are enjoying my yarn. So cannot wait to have another online update. And speaking of trunk shows and online updates, next year I am going to be focusing mainly on online sales. So I, I know I really enjoy doing trunk shows as always. Like I, I love meeting people in person and I love giving you guys the opportunity to see the yarn in person and meet me in person and meet you in person, everything in person. Uh, but however, I really wanna focus on online sales just because it's it's a it's a tough balance. So I will be totally honest. It's a tough balance between having enough inventory for updates versus prepping for trunk shows. So just a little heads up. Uh, nothing set in stone, but I think going forward, just for the next year, I, I definitely want to focus more on online sales. All right. So as far as what's been happening in my life, uh, yeah, Vlogtober. Vlogtober has been happening. It's, I'm not gonna lie, it's been a challenge, but at the same time, I'm having so much fun putting them, putting the videos together. I don't know if I ever mentioned that uh, my previous day job used to be a video editor. So I find, you know, lately, you might find that surprising going by my previous videos because they, when I, when I publish a video sometimes in my mind, even though like the lighting's kind of off or the editing's kind of choppy, it, they're, it's definitely not up to my, what I've been trained uh, as a video editor to be considered acceptable. So, but given that I don't have enough hours in the day, usually it, it I just have to make it quick, quick, quick and slapdash and get it up, you know, because I, I want, I want to have a podcast for you guys. So I'm really enjoying these new lights because the lighting is so much, I feel like the lighting is so much better compared to a couple weeks ago when I was just, you know, just getting situated down here. So I hope you guys are enjoying the new lights as well. It, you know, not too many shadows or anything. So anyway, <laughs> things are getting more and more to my personal standards as far as like video editing is concerned. But yes, even though I feel like this, this episode is going to be a little bit choppy. But yeah, as I mentioned, it's, it's a big challenge for me just, you know, getting a video up every day and edited. I got up at 6.30 this morning uh, to get that out. It took about maybe an hour to edit and publish and when everything was all said and done. Um, I will say if you are interested in vlogging uh, every single day or thinking about taking the challenge, the very first episode is always going to take the longest because you are basically setting up a template for yourself in either whatever video editing software you're using. So I use Funnel Cut Pro. So I have like that once, you know, the, the intro is all created and it's there in the timeline and I have the music all picked out and the titles I can just drag and drop and move things around as they were for the from I can use elements from the previous episode if that makes any sense so you know I can be a little bit more snappier with with the publishing and updating so I hope you are enjoying Vlogtober as much as I am uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do vlogmas this year because I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. Dennis, I will say, is not a fan of the vlogging, the daily vlogging at least. <laughs> so I won't torture him again this year. As you can probably guess, he hasn't been in many of this month's um, vlogs, if at all. So anyway, maybe I'll get him in this weekend, but no promises. I started watching alternate, it's called Alternate Universe with Kim. Kim Smith Happy, I don't know if you're familiar with her, but she left a comment on one of my first uh, Vlogtober videos and I was like, oh, I've never, I like, I have heard of her podcast before, but I never got around to watching it. So I tuned in and oh my gosh, she's, she's awesome. So if you're not familiar, she actually runs the alternate universe yarn shop and I'm not exactly sure where that is. I will put it in the down bar, but uh, she also creates these really beautiful postcards uh, using her hand lettering and it's just really beautiful graphic design and she has really inspired me to kind of give that a try, uh, if that makes any sense. So thank you, Kim. Uh, but yeah, I 
I will be totally honest, uh, whenever I see people, especially Katie from Inside Number 23, she does like her own hand lettering and it just seems so fun and zen and meditative. I don't know, it's just something that I wanna give it, I, I wanna give it a go. So I've been watching a couple of YouTube tutorials and kind of just getting a feel for how to, like where to begin or where to start and somehow that kind of tied into bullet journaling because I know that there are so many, uh, if you just go, like look on Pinterest, there are so many bullet journal templates you can download and you could get really creative and really detailed with the artwork for bullet journaling, which is a little more than I wanted. Like if I were to bullet journal, it's, it seems like a little bit more that uh, like time that I would want to invest in it. But at the same time, just like, it just seems so cool. Like a nice little diary or something of doodles and graphic art to have and I kind of, I want in on the fun. I know I, I talked about my passion planner, which I love. However, it's been dearly neglected. It's still sitting on my shelf. I don't use it every day, unfortunately, but it does come in handy occasionally. Like if I know I have a lot going on, I will pull it out and just jot everything down. So it does come in handy occasionally, but for a daily or like a daily thing, I definitely need a better system. And so, yeah, bullet journaling seems very appealing to me, and if I can kind of combine that with graphic illustration or hand lettering and just having a little fun with that, I don't know, it could be a lot of fun. So I'm I'm going to be dabbling in that, and yeah, it's it's just kind of ties into the fact that before I started knitting, I used to be very much into oil painting or just drawing and oil painting. I, you could give me, growing up, you could give me a pen and I would be happy as a clam. I would be quiet, you wouldn't hear boo from me. So, uh, but then I discovered knitting and now I unfortunately don't feel like I have time to paint or devote much time to painting or drawing anymore. It's just, I love knitting. I, I, knitting is my first love. It's the thing that I'm passionate about. But at the same time, I really, really do miss drawing. I miss painting and I still have an easel. I want to say the first gift Dennis ever uh, got for my birthday was an easel. So I still have that easel. I use that easel, but after knitting took over my life, it's just kind of been hanging out. And I would love to be able to kind of, you know, take it out again and make use of it. Uh, yeah, because I miss it. I miss drawing and painting. So I don't know. I'm definitely feeling very inspired to give drawing and painting another go. So yeah, we'll see where that goes. So, oh, speaking of which, it's in my lap right now. I got a bullet journal. It's a bullet journal and it's purple and I love it. So this is, in case you're curious, it just, it literally just came in the mail. It's a Lectrum uh, 1917 and it's dotted. So pre-dotted, um, very excited to get started. Uh, I watched several, <laughs> several YouTube videos on how to get started bullet journaling. Uh, one of my favorite ones uh, is by Amy Schmidauer. If you're not familiar with Amy Schmidauer, she is amazing. Especially if you are into, I know this is a lot of information right now, but um, this is how I d decided that I wanted to give bullet journaling a try because I was watching her channel. But if you are interested in vlogging or creating videos or just being a general, you know, savvy kind of, you know, social networker, definitely check out her YouTube channel. She has so many great tips, lots of insights. I actually do receive some emails from people wanting to know how to up their viewership. And she definitely has a lot of great tips. And I will say like, you know, I, I don't pay attention very much to my numbers because I do this because I enjoy it. And occasionally I'll check my numbers and like, wow, that, that was a jump from the last time I, I checked in on it. But uh, I find just, you know, if you are curious about, you know, gaining more viewers, uh, honestly, just do podcast because you enjoy podcasting, do it because you love it and don't, ex you know, even if you're new to it, don't expect your numbers to, you know, skyrocket. Um, just be yourself, do it because you love it, do it because it's fun uh, and don't worry about numbers. The numbers will come. It's not gonna happen overnight, but you know, just continue to make the things that you love making. If you make it, they will come. <laughs> That's my parting words to you. So anyway, I hope I hope that inspires you guys. So uh, yeah, looking forward to, to biting into this puppy right here and I will keep you posted on that. So anyway, I've been rambling on way too much and I feel like I have a lot to edit now. <laughs> I'm gonna, I have dying to do today too, so we'll see how far I get with this. But uh, yes, so happy knitting, and I will see you next time. Bye. Bye.
have you worked on this week, Bella? Show me your whip. What whips have you?